Hello, everyone. I'm Pastor Tim Gauger coming again from Christ Our Savior Lutheran Church here in Rockford, Michigan. And it's Friday, so we have an interview. And today I'd like to welcome to the program a member of Christ Our Savior Lutheran, uh, Brian Sotkamp. And we're going to have uh, Brian talk to us a little bit about uh, Builders for Christ, which we'll explain in a minute. So wel welcome, Brian. Well, good afternoon, Pastor. So um, just, just before we get into the Builders for Christ stuff, how many so, so you and Ramona, your wife, uh, are relatively recent members. Is it two years yet? I'm trying to think it's, how long. Uh, all the way up to four. Four? Yes. What in the world happened? <laughs> yeah. I guess we have fun. Uh, time flies and we're having fun. So yeah. well, it's, it's yeah. great to have you and Ramona as part of our mm -hmm. church. And uh, one of the things that uh, I learned about you uh, relatively quickly is uh, your interest in building things. You, know, you did a lot of work on your home out there, uh, and uh, but also in helping build churches. And and so uh, I know you are a part of Builders for Christ. So I, I maybe you could take a moment and just tell everyone uh, a little bit about what Builders for Christ is and what it does. Sure. Um, Builders for Christ is a, um, I'm not real sure of the origins, I think the um, group started up back in the, the late 90s. Um, and I'm pretty sure it started in Wisconsin somewhere where a couple guys got together and um, wanted to help out at a church project or something. And it kind of took off and it got more organized over the years. And, and uh, the, the group has um, um, been doing projects um, as many, probably as many as they can handle um, ever since then. Um, they've uh, gone international, actually. They did a project in Germany once um, and they do projects pretty much anywhere across this country. And I, know the projects, I know they've done some in the Caribbean, like after hurricanes. Yes, stuff. yes. They have done uh, some help in, in rebuilding down there. And they have worked hand in hand with um, Christian Aid and Relief, which is a Wells thing. Um, it, it, Builders for Christ is, is uh, strictly a Wells, and I'm guessing ELS um, organization. Um, and I dare say outsiders are, are not welcome, but it, it's, it's um, within the Wells organization. Um, and, and as of a couple of years ago, we came under the umbrella of Kingdom Workers. And, and I'm not sure exactly why that happened. And it must, some of that might have been for funding purposes um, and just organizational purposes. It was a little bit easier perhaps to do that. Um, but anyways, um, Builders for Christ is, is a group of uh, we, uh, anybody that wants to volunteer and, and help uh, in a construction project. And those construction projects can be anything um, um, Hurricane Katrina, Panama City was, was a big one. Uh, many, many people went down there to help out and clean up and rebuild down there. And that lasted for, oh, I'm guessing at least six months, maybe longer. Um, and uh, remodeling buildings, uh, building new buildings, um, parsonages remodeled. Um, and uh, they've been on there's a project coming up on the Apache Reservation and there's been one or two there in the past in Arizona. Um, I recently have been working uh, myself with down in um, Fayetteville, North Carolina. Okay, I was gonna new, ask you your most recent project. So. The uh, um, building a new uh, actually church building with offices, bathrooms, everything. Um, and that's off and on again, and COVID had a hand in that in, in stopping it the first time around about a year ago. Um, and we're going back down again early February, and hopefully we finish up then. Um, but the, the projects are varied. Typically, obviously, for good, for weather reasons, they like to go south in the winter. They can find a project down south. Yeah, it'd be a little hard to roof right now here in Michigan. I mean, it's yeah, possible, yeah, yeah. but it'd be a little tough. <laughs> um, we were in Lubbock a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. um, remodeling down there and um, adding. So, so when, when you and Ramona go to a project like, like Fayetteville here in February, how, how long do you anticipate you're going to stay? Well, <laughs> this, this time around, um, 
we, we just purchased a, an RV. Uh, which that was going to be my us, next question. Where did you? Where do you? Where do you stay? <laughs> which which allows us to stay uh, indefinitely. Uh, we will hopefully be there till the end of the project this time, which okay. we anticipate to be about two months. All right. So that, that's pretty cool. And and uh, and then like, what kind of work have you done when you've been there? Like in, on a project? Like like are you? I just made a crack about roofing, but like, are you wiring? Are you painting? What are you doing? Or a little bit of everything? Or um, uh, we do anything we're pretty much allowed to do. Um, we, we are not, uh, generally speaking, the, there will be in the group um, um, a general contractor or a carpenter that was in a past lifetime, so to speak. Um, most of the guys are retired, so um, they're still looking to keep busy. Um, I have done roofing is is done but not not appreciated <laughs> let's put it that way <laughs> uh, they don't like to get up on, especially old guys you know we don't like to get up on the roof <laughs> they, if they can hire that out they will yeah. um, electrical work is typically something that has to be done by an electrician um, and we do not um, typically delve into that part of, of the contract um, and plumbing too is something you know a lot of us can do but um, building codes may prevent us from doing some of that work. Uh -huh. So we're building walls, siding the buildings. Um, we did a, a painting and drywalling and, and uh, stuff like that, hanging windows, hanging doors, um, remodeling, you know, a lot of remodel projects are tearing things apart. And uh, anyways, we, and we do what we can. So, so a lot of times these projects, um, that I'm familiar with are like in the Fayetteville case, it's a smaller congregation, a mission church. Uh, the Fayetteville one is a military uh, community. And so it's kind of a, a church that serves a lot of people that are in and out because of military. So it really helps to have um, some experienced guys uh, really from all over the country um, come in and, and do some of the work that, you know, a congregation that's tiny uh, has a hard time generating that kind of volunteer hours or even have those kind of skills in their membership. Uh, so it's really kind of a neat thing. What What is maybe, um, yeah, I'm sure you got a lot of good memories, uh, like maybe a blessing that that you and, and, and Ramona particularly appreciate from your association with Builders for Christ. It, it's, it's all about building friendships. Um, and, and working with people of like faith, um, you know, you can go to the construction site and don't have to worry about cursing and swearing and you guys that, you know, are not a, a Christian, so to speak, or whatever, um, and don't care about that stuff. And, and, and all of us do. And, and it's nice to be able to go and work with people of a like faith. And the friendships are our lifetime. Uh, we've made many, many friends and you run into people um, that have a connection to somebody that has a connection to somebody. Mm -hmm. um, uh, James and, and Elisa Becker's grandfather was, uh, was done in Fayetteville this last oh, year. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. cool. So anyways, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's, it's a small synod, but you're gonna run into somebody, but the, the, the camaraderie and the friendships, um, there's usually a happy hour after work every day and there's um, usually a card game every night. and. Um, you just enjoy each other's company and, and the friendships are. So, so let's say there's someone watching this and they're a year or two away from retirement and they're thinking, wow, I didn't know about this. How would I get some more information? I wouldn't mind trying doing this. What, what would you recommend to, to them to maybe get into this a little bit? Well, ask somebody that's been there and done it. I was hesitant to get in uh, <laughs> myself um, and it started at Camp Croy in Wisconsin. Um, and it just happened at the week that we were over there helping in the kitchen. Um, one of the leaders uh, was coming to camp to do some um, oh, planning because they were going to remodel some of the cabins over there. And Ramona got me in to uh, talk to him privately. I didn't know this. And she says, you got to get Brian into this thing here. He had this BFC stuff. And um, he came and talked to me and I said, well, I agreed to help out at Camp Croy because I, I was at the time was um, very willing to go over there and help out uh, because I knew some of the um, people over there. Anyways, um, so, the, and it's all about 
anybody can, we, they, they want anybody to volunteer. Um, you know, if you can do nothing but paint, that's still a big deal. Um, we can put a paintbrush in your hand and, and you go out and paint and you learn new, new skills. I, every time I go, I learn something new and I've been around the block a little bit, so to speak. And, and um, brother-in-laws that do all kinds of carpentry stuff, but I still learn new things all, every time I go down. Um, so my skill set expands um, and I get better at the things that I do. Um, and, it, and if you go down for nothing but just to volunteer and be helpful, that's great. They, they look for that too. That's all. I was going to ask, so I, you've talked about a lot of laymen are on this, and I think that's just the absolute awesome thing about this, that it's a lay-driven organization. Do you yes. ever run into like retired pastors down there helping? And, and are we any good or are you, you just <laughs> have us sit in the back and clean I, up, I, you know, or? Well, we've, we've had the pastors themselves help out. Well, yeah, yeah, but you know, but I just wonder, like, if a retired pastor would show up. Um, you know, you'd... <laughs> I, yes, I think uh, this last time too, there was a retired pastor that showed up for oh. a week, and I and I think he was a help painting or something. Okay, um, so maybe my last my last question too, or or is like length of time. It sort of sounds like that's kind of up to the volunteer. Like, if you had two months, you could go for two months. If you had I want to make a week where I'm going to go volunteer and you could coordinate all this through builders for Christ. I'm sure there's some sort of a clearing house of you've yes. got a week in July and we've got a project that could use somebody like you in July here in wherever. Correct. Yeah. So huh. I, I, I could talk about this for half an hour, but I won't. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, the, the, the builders, for Christ has um, three RVs that are available for rental, um, but they want to limit that to a three-week stay. Okay. So and it's it, it's seventy-five dollars a week, uh, which basically pays for your your propane and whatever. Um, but anyways, that's all it costs. So it doesn't cost you much to go and volunteer. Uh, there's a three-week limitation, um, and and. They try most often, and this is where builders runs into a problem. They try to get the campsite right at the facility where the project is. Um, that can't always happen, but um, so it's right there, and you just get up in the morning and you get out of bed and have a, have your cup of coffee and you walk over to the project and have your morning meeting. Um, but it's it's just a, a fun time and it's great camaraderie. Um, if you go to the Wells Kingdom Workers website and under services and, and go under construction there, then BFC will come up uh -huh. and it'll show you all the projects that are planned, that are ongoing, um, and, and the, the forms are there for you to volunteer if you want to. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, my, my associations of home missions, um, you know, we had uh, a lot of contact with Builders for Christ. I know, uh, the gentleman over in Muskegon, Martin Lair, uh, was uh, like a project manager for many years for them, and and uh, and we I know like Ralph Buddy here at church did some stuff down at the Apache uh, Indian Reservation. I'm not mm -hmm. so sure if that was directly with the reservation mission or if it was through Builders for Christ, but he did like handyman work there, and Irene did some nursing. So there's a lot of opportunities in our synod. It's one of the blessings of a synod, and this is one of the unique ones. And I kind of, was listening to you talk about camaraderie and stuff, I was kind of thinking about the men's breakfast Bible study that you're part of. And mm -hmm. there's a camaraderie in that, even though it right now it's kind of virtual. And I also was kind of thinking about, you never really, the best way to get to know someone is to do something with them, like, like work together on a project. Uh, yes. and, and that's always true Agreed. in churches. And this is kind of like a, a glorified uh, project uh, work day uh, that uh, you meet people from all over the country and, and uh, all over our church body. So uh, I think that's that's great. It's a ringing endorsement. All right. It's not a Coscast interview if I don't ask you what your favorite kind of ice cream is because people want to know. <laughs> well, uh, Butter Brickle has been kind of a favorite of mine and, and Ramona has recently made some at the house here. Wow. Uh, that just knocked my socks off. That's a um, first. I haven't, we butter haven't had brickle. butter brickle on the program yet. Yeah. I also know you lived in the Northwest, so you're kind yes. of an apple aficionado. So I also, resurrecting a question from the fall, favorite kind of apple for eating? Well, being that we now live across 
the street from an orchard. <laughs> and this past um, September, I think, uh, uh, we met one of the workers over there during the summer, and um, he brought us a, a several bags of honey crisp for, fresh from the orchard. And, and and by far the best honey crisp I have ever eaten. Yeah, um, any, I think any fresh apple right off the tree is good. You could eat yeah, it. <laughs> we, we also picked some apples down the road here um, called Northern Spy, which I had never had before. And you shared um, some and, of those yeah. with us, and we loved yes. them. We and, like and those I, I think that was perhaps the best tasting apple I've ever had. Yeah, it was very good. So, yeah. so everybody, Builders for Christ, Butter Brickle, and go buy some apples. So, <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Brian. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you.